Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to RPT, Red Pill Tamales. Shout out to all the new listeners. I know it's a lot of new y'all, new people coming in. Uh, this is Steven Says That. This is season, <laughs> man, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Season. This is season seven, episode 74. It is Wednesday, July 28th, 2021. I'm your host, Chingo Bling, and we have producer Rob in the building. What up, everybody? They were asking for you on the road, Rob. Oh, man, I heard Phoenix was uh, literally fire. It was literally a movie. Actually, no, it was raining a lot. Oh, yeah? It was, yeah, it was humid. Oh, okay. It was raining. Oh, so you're, it's like being at home. Yeah, I was trying to go out there to escape the constant rain, and uh, I guess I took the rain with me. But yeah, uh, shout out to everyone that came out to the shows, man. Phoenix, Arizona, y'all were great. I appreciate the love, the feedback. Arizona, it, it's like, I feel like Texas and Arizona are like sister states. I heard you say that in a story, and uh, I've, I, people love it. I mean, people that I know that have been there love it. I don't know what it's what it's to great. expect if you go there. Oh, yeah, you should definitely visit, uh, especially if you're into outdoorsy stuff. Um, you know, people out there love being out in the sun and hiking, and you got a lot of, uh, you know, depending on what area, like college kids, mm-hmm. uh, downtown Phoenix, where I was, they're doing a lot of construction, so that kind of sucked. Mm. And um, even if you're in the red state, you see those blue inner cities yeah you know shit lady with no teeth was trying to run up on me and bryson me and bryson went out for a smoke break yeah at the hotel and uh man this i don't want to call her a, a drug addict but you know what i'm saying she was she had no teeth and she was being very flirtatious <laughs> but if it walks like a duck and it sounds like a duck it might be a, it might be a crackhead uh she was being very flirtatious she was all up in our grill and i just didn't want to have nothing to do with it i'm like man let me get away from this person before yeah. people drive by and be like, man, Chingo over there with a crackhead. <laughs> and he was letting her do all kind of stuff in the alleyway for a cheeseburger. Media these days, they'll fucking make it happen. They'll, they'll put spin a spin it. on it. And I went to a Trump rally. So, uh, you know, there's going to be a hit piece or two about me. At least. It's a public episode, too. So the whole thing will be on YouTube. If you guys want to share it and write all the hit pieces on it, it's on YouTube. Uh, CBTV. Subscribe while you're at it. That's right. So my next stops are... August 18th, San Jose, California. I'll see you guys at the San Jose Improv. Denver Improv, August 27th through the 29th. Um, if anybody has a connect on microdosing shrooms, um, I'm just, just for research purposes, I'm not going to consume it. Uh, then we have El Paso, Texas, September 9th through the 11th. Uh, Brea, California, September 15th. And uh, I don't know why it's not in my notes, but I know we're doing Oxnard, September 16th. Viva Mexico, cabrones. Orale. Even though it's still America first. Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th. San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th. Irvine, November 3rd. Houston, November 5th through the 7th. Sass. So, yo, um, everybody that's tuning in right now, if, if, you're, if this is refreshing to you, to hear somebody that's like, what do they call us? Marginalized person of color? I Oppre- like it, yeah. Someone of the oppressed. Yes. Uh, calling out the the hypocrisy of the left the radicalism of the left uh for those of y'all that don't know the left left me ah. the, uh, yeah the left just went to left and they, they abandoned you big time and uh, so i guess you could call me a walk away democrat or whatever you're uh, politically homeless Yes, I'm politically homeless. I don't like labels, uh, but I do love the Constitution. I love freedom. And we all just want simple stuff. We want a strong country with a strong economy, jobs. Let's bring back manufacturing. Let's try to control our borders so that we don't just, you know, get lost in the sauce. You know what I mean? We need to, we didn't, we need to know. Who's coming in here? What y'all bringing? What y'all got? What's your intentions? We want the good ones. We want the good immigrants, people that are going to contribute. All these MS-13, all these cartel people, human traffickers, molesters, rapists, murderers. Y'all know somebody tried to warn y'all about that, and y'all got offended as if there were no rapists, murderers, and, and, and you know... <laughs> homiciders you know what let's let the let's set the landscape for listeners right now a lot of new people that have listened we had a guest every tuesday or every wednesday this month in july uh-huh. so this is the first uh public episode with no guests i was telling chingo before we started recording so maybe we're going to be a little conversational at the beginning of it and then we'll hit our topics and we'll hit you know your rally and we'll hit all that stuff but i just want to set that out because you just said a really funny point that i had on the top of my head is when you said that you posted something on your uh, Facebook page, and I, I was seeing comments that were like, well, you're scared of a couple Mexicans coming over, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then the fans were going at it. They're like, I'll buy you a one-way ticket to, you know, uh, wherever. Let's, and let's me- put them up at your house? Yeah, mm-hmm. right? And then they were like, uh, okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm, what am I, I'm supposed to be scared of a couple Mexicans coming to work here. And Why? it's not a couple Mexicans, bro. And it's also not just people trying to work here. And, and it's sure like, as hell ain't a couple. <laughs> and it's not 1982 either, you know? It's yeah. not 1975. It's... 
that that logic is like okay that's kind of where the problem lies not to say that they're wrong but the way that they're going about it like oh chingo you're scared of a couple mexicans coming to work that's not what we're talking about man yeah I, we've already gone over this i am mr they can't deport us all i am the son of immigrants everybody with a heart is empathetic you know people are escaping dictatorships communism starvation people are escaping civil wars uh, and some are escaping shitty economies and, yeah. and things like that um so i don't knock people for making that dangerous voyage and it just lets you know how shitty other countries are mm -hmm. if they're having to go through so much risking I mean, life and limb yeah the entire globe has gotten shooken up and we have a global migration crisis it's not just america people are being moved and shuffled so human smugglers and human traffickers are making a killing right now. The cartels, besides dope, they're making money off moving people. So I'm not saying everybody here is everybody coming is here to steal your job. Everybody coming has fentanyl, a book a book bag full of fentanyl. Uh, I'm not accusing all migrants of being bad people, but we need to be able to have a control on our front door and our back door, all the windows. You know, y'all got cameras at y'all's house. Y'all got alarms. You know what I mean? Y'all yeah. got some type of security at y'all's houses. So how... The people that say that, they were quick to say, well, we don't lock the doors in our neighborhood. You know, just uh, to make the argument. Just to make the argument. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Forget them. Uh, they can sit at the kids' table with that argument. Right. We're adults. You know what I mean? We have kids. We want safe communities. Um, if you're all about, you know... A bunch of terror. I'm not saying everybody's a terrorist that's coming through. No. But all you need is a handful. Look, look at the hands. For those of y'all that are watching. <laughs> but is this a handful, though? Look at this. Informant Anthony said, just in, it is predicted that around 1.8 million plus migrants will cross the border into the U.S. illegally this year. Those are the ones that only get caught. Those yeah, are the ones they know of. They get caught. If the current weekly, monthly numbers hold on pace, this would be the most illegal entries in recorded u.s history and for context that is fox news but you can go look it up yeah. wherever you want to find your charts or your numbers but you could talk to anybody that knows anything about the subject talk to border patrol people i mean you could talk to um if y'all got cousins in del rio or mccallan anything like that i mean they're flying people around on your tax dollar on purpose like like i said we all got a heart yeah but why y'all being slick um, inflation is hitting the citizens hard. Whatever happened to take care, taking care of the citizens? It's like they're giving more rights to the criminals and the homeless than the veterans and just taxpayers. Yeah. The taxpayers are, are having to foot the bill for everything. But anyway, I digress. You digress. So, you know, what I was saying is, if, if you appreciate, if, if this is like refreshing, because some people tell me that, like, man, it is refreshing to see like a b brown entertainer, somebody that's out there on social media, and they're speaking up for the truth. Yeah. Everybody knows Trump won by a landslide. <laughs> Everybody knows. And we're... Uh, sorry, my, this is uh, YouTube. Can I not? <laughs> you're, you're being so inflammatory to the YouTube algorithm. But the, the robot is like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't say that. Uh, Finish this awesome thought, and then I'll get into another conversation piece. So basically, man, we're just trying to keep it real. We really care about our country. We're, we're not falling for the false rhetoric that, that this flag is racist, that this is a racist country, that it's not inclusive, that it doesn't provide opportunity, that capitalism isn't good. If y'all are so damn pro-communist, take your ass to Cuba, or Venezuela, or, or something like that, Russia, or, or even China. You know, China has a different form of communism, but... Yeah, follow J Jonathan Coppola, our last guest, who is covering Cuba like no one else, honestly, that I'm following yeah. uh, is, is doing. Mm -hmm. But... Um, what you, what you just said about like if you find this refreshing if you, if you find it great i was i was thinking about the show and us over the weekend you were in phoenix uh i mean my soul super pregnant and she's cleaning the house all weekend she's super yeah. busy and we're like banking a bunch of her lounge podcasts and stuff and i was thinking to myself listening to tim pool and a couple other people like tim pool for instance uh, and even crowder and some of these other people that, that i know i watch are trying really like carefully let's just say tim pool specifically to play this algorithm to the point where you don't get banned off these platforms right because mm. we're useless then there's nothing yeah, refreshing yeah. about a brand entertainer if the brand entertainer is deplatformed yeah. from these platforms so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like how do we convey that enough to you, people you, uh, you know to to put the content out there but then in order to support it is, is what's going to maintain it like 
like if you want the wild shit that you can't put on mm. the public platforms, okay. you have to support the art or you have to support the conversations. Mm-hmm. You have to support the interviews because we can't put a lot of this stuff on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So how about this? You might want to go back and bleep me. Like It'll be like bleep one <laughs> by a landslide. <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to speak Magalingo. We're going to be like, you know, everybody knows faux fifth. Take it from Nino America. Yeah, faux fifth. Everybody know, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Look, faux fifth. Yep. Everybody, everybody know faux fifth one. Faux fifth. <laughs> Yeah, faux fit. We're just gonna call him that, Mister Faux Five. Mister Faux, Mister Faux Five, Mister Faux Five. Come on, man. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about my experience at the rally. But um, so yeah, starting in July, we're gonna be doing a bonus podcast episode with strictly with the patrons, puro VIP, and it'll be via Zoom. So you'll be in the room with us, and we'll be able to see you, talk to you in real time. So basically, we're gonna do this Thursday, right? That's right. Yeah. This so Thursday. this is gonna drop on Wednesday, the twenty eighth, and then the next day we're gonna record our Friday premium episode mm-hmm. in which the TIA will be uh, able to jump in. Yeah. So all members of the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency, make sure y'all check the Patreon app. Uh, we'll blast out the time so that nobody misses out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, members of the TIA will be able to pop. A cold one heat up some tamales and join in on the podcast convo these will be monthly virtual events they're going to take place towards the end of the month we're going to try thursdays yeah more details to come please stay tuned join the tia and support the podcast today at patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales yeah 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 somebody uh, messaged me and said uh hey my my son listens to the podcast sometimes with me and they they know the intro by memory and oh. uh a couple of uh, i mean the episodes ago it was when she messaged me chingo didn't say the year of our lord and the her son got mad he's oh like, what he's like, okay he, he missed that. this is july 28th the year of our lord 2021 <laughs> <laughs> i was like how old your son seven <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> wow. And you know what? Some people after the show in Phoenix, they said, uh, yeah, man, we all listen. You know, my kids listen. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to cuss. The swearing. Yeah, I I'm know. not going to cuss. I know. I'll leave, I'll leave it to like special occasions because during Trump's speech, he cussed like maybe once. Yeah. And it was so impactful. He, was, he said, and the Democrats are like, oh, shit, we got caught. <sighs> Man, people were like, oh, the whole sh- thousands of people were like, <laughs> yeah, say that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that part, but I saw the the Green New. Was he talking about the Green New Deal when he said? Oh it yeah, again? that's another cuss word. The Green New Deal is Green New bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was. was like, oh, yeah, because he's a master at branding. Yes, and another reason why I was saying earlier, like, how do we tiptoe around these algorithms to have them work in our favor to push this content, but also, you know, not get it taken down or whatever yeah. mm-hmm. swearing is another one of those things really unfortunately yeah. right okay that's why you don't ever hear you know tim pool or, or crowder or shapiro anybody swear because it's not advertiser friendly it's not advertiser friendly and if it ain't advertiser friendly they're worried about their bags the way everyone else is worried about our bags man can you bleep me out please <laughs> but here's the thing too so i gotta say i don't want that to say it is a form of self-censorship right but so if you want that kind of talk it's going to be on the it has to only live in on the premium episodes so so th- Rob always tells me before, hey, man, this is a public episode, or hey, man, this is a premium episode. So now I know a little bit better, like, okay, when it's premium, I could cuss a little bit. Yeah. But I, but I know there's kids listening, and, and really the kids are, are the future, and they're bombarded with all this Marxist, neo-Marxist, postmodernism, like these CRT in the school, some, some teachers speaking out against math, talking about math is racist, and... It doesn't serve our country. Our country, we need to compete against other countries, and our youth is the key. So uh, I, I really want to make sure that um, the youngsters are like, man, growing up, my parents had that, that boy Chingo on, and yeah. he just had a way of explaining it in a different way and not being so stuffy about it. Yeah. Do you want to get it? You want to talk about the rallies first, and then we'll get into some topics? Sure. Yeah, man. So set it up for everybody. So, this was the day before the show. Yeah. So this is already like a few days ago. So I'm going to make sure my memory pulls up as much as possible um so just to give some context as a kid you know growing up in the 80s and stuff like that i remember donald trump like he put out a book called the art of the deal i was a little kid i read it i don't really i was too little a lot of it probably went over my head but everybody looked up to this dude because his brand was synonymous with like fancy hotels you know golf courses just success a lavish lifestyle lavish lifestyle the boy had his own jet um you know like like a winner, success, American success story, you know, real estate developer and so on. So it was all positive. Now, when he started 
running for, for office and then all the mud slinging and the hoaxes and the fake news and all that and getting taken out of context and the whole, you know, they're, they're not sending their best. That whole thing threw me off. So I was like a big Trump hater. All right. So fast forward, got red pilled and all that. I had this show scheduled coming up in Phoenix and, um, uh, the folks from Turning Point USA reached out and said, hey, does Chingo want to be VIP? Um, let me put on my badge, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Shout out to Turning Point. <laughs> you know, most rappers hold up their chain. I hold up my, my Donald Trump VIP. Yo, hold that up to the camera. Yeah, this, this, this is going to be the, the thumbnail. This is going to be a meme right here. This is the thumbnail. Hmm. Donald Trump is your president, whether you like it or not. Okay, so, um, all right, so I get invited to the rally, and I'm a little nervous. I'm like, oh, man, it's going to be some QAnon people out there. It's probably going to be some Proud Boys. They're going to be all near me. Somebody's going to run up, take a picture. So I had this outfit planned out. It was supposed to be boots, jeans, some kind of like little button down or something, and uh, my cowboy hat. Well, needless to say, it was muggy, rainy. I had to walk from my hotel to the theater where the rally was going to be. And I was like, I'm not doing this boot stuff. I, I need to be mobile. Mm -hmm. and it's it's going to be a long day. So If you have to throw a high kick, you got to be able to move. Yeah, so I ended up having to dress like Antifa. <laughs> so I, now I'm wearing all black. I'm looking silly now. This guy's an imposter. I, everybody got on red, white, and blue. I'm over here all black looking like a, a Somebody's damn funeral. Antifa. Yeah, like a, a provocateur. Mm. And... Um, so I'm trying to find my spot in line. I'm like, okay, where's, where's the VIP line? Where's the VIP? They're like, oh, it's over there. And I'm like, okay, let me find the end of the line. And I'm not going to lie. It was a little unorganized. Like some of the lines were bleeding into each other. Mm -hmm. It was so many people. <clears throat> so I don't know if maybe they, because people camped out the night before. People what? were, out, yes, people camped out the night before. Some people there like five in the morning. Some people started camping at six in the morning to get a good spot so that you don't get sold out because there were, probably thousands of people that couldn't get in it was like a new iphone launch Psh, crazy plus you know concert plus sporting event plus something else and uh so i'm looking for the end of the vip line i'm like uh, excuse me is you vip yeah we're vip is where's the end they're like oh it's way back there and i'm walking 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 i get to the end of the block hi is, is this the end they're like no no no, it curves around i'm like shit <laughs> excuse my language so now i'm having to go around the block to find my line and i'm there probably for like an hour and a half two hours when a dude finally walks up with his little suit he's like okay uh everyone that's in this line this is the v vip vip is over there it's gonna wrap around this barricade over here by general mission i'm like i'm just vip i'm not v vip i've been in the wrong the wrong damn line so a lot of us had to get out <laughs> oh no yeah long story short man we get in there and uh you know secret service they got like some tsa type you know you're going through metal detectors they're checking you got to pull everything out your pockets make sure there's no provocateurs you know making sure it's not a setup you know like one six everybody knows about that um and then in the beginning so i sent front row bro front row next to uh state senator wendy rogers mm -hmm. from arizona the lady who really I don't want to say spearheaded, but she has been really vocal. She's the one that's been like, we need to decertify. Yeah, she's de yeah, decertify. She's decertify. Yeah. I mean, she's trying to take it a step further than the average. And then next to me was the gentleman. Uh, his name is, uh, they call him Cowboy Andy. He's the gentleman in charge of the cyber ninjas who was literally in charge of the forensic audit. So in, in front of me, he's chopping it up with me. He's showing me his phone. He's like, look, look, it's live streaming. Here's my head security guy. And they're going through ballots. Here's what they're looking for. He's showing me on his phone. Oh, wow. Uh, the Cyber Ninjas dude's texting him. He's showing me. And I'm like, damn. Um, Pause right there. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind when he's showing you that? I felt like I was in a movie, bro. I felt like, damn, I'm the chosen one. Like, <laughs> You're Neo. Like, yeah, I got, yeah, for real. I'm like, this is the Matrix. I got to wake my people up. I'm, people don't even know. Even Fox News, which is owned by the Murdochs, Fox News is not covering the audits. It's like we're really the the majority but they want us to 
be demoralized and defeated and not speak up and self-censor and forget that this is America and just watch these people drive us off a cliff and just don't say nothing. Just like, well, I guess we're inflation is up. Wages are down. Uh, they're, they're just taxing the working class every which way at the gas pump. Every time you got to pump gas, you're feeling it. Every time you're at the grocery store, everything's going up. There's a labor shortage. They're paying people to stay home. The, their whole economic approach is caca. It is straight boo boo. Um, so anyway, so the show begins. Everyone's pumped up. Everyone, it's like a pep rally. Everyone's excited. You got all these patriots. I'm just reading people's t-shirts. Like, you know, um, your, my freedoms don't end where your feelings begin. And just like t-shirts like Trump won. Everybody knows it. You know it. I know it. They know it. <laughs> um, and, then, and then they start having, you know, all the present. Charlie Kirk goes up there to speak. You have um, a bunch of different people running for office. Like, you know, running for, you know, state senator, blah, blah, blah. One lady got booed because she voted, apparently, I'm not too familiar with Arizona politics, but she voted against the uh, voter transparency, meaning you got to prove you're alive. Mm -hmm. You got to be of age. You got to show freaking ID. You got might have to sign your name. You might have to put the last four of your social. Things things that AOC says is uh, racist. Right. Uh, she got booed off stage. I felt bad for her because I didn't know the reason. I'm like, man, why don't they just stop booing? And oh, wait, was it in the middle of her? She had literally just went up there. Yeah, I She's saw like, that. Hi, my name is da da da. Yeah. Urgenti, this and that. Boo. Boo. And I'm like, oh, okay, what's going on? And she's like, and da 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 da. Really, guys? Re listen. Boo. <laughs> anyway, so. You know, it went on and on and on, different people, and everybody's waiting for the big homie, you know, faux fifth. Yeah. And uh, finally, it's time. You know, Charlie Kirk goes up there, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boom, 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 faux fifth. They bring him out. And then his, there's a big giant screen on, on that theater stage, and his graphics, it's like his intro. Mm hmm. So it's like he's like a WWE wrestler. I mean, I'm gonna have an intro like that. Once I get back on tour, <laughs> uh, I just gotta edit it this week, but, um, you know, obviously you want to prime the audience, you want to hype them up, and it just gives you like a quick little overview of what he was trying to do for the country, how much love, how much support, how big those rallies were. Um, and I was always under the impression, back when I was a lefty, mm. I was always under the impression that these are a bunch of racist people, these are just a bunch of, um, they're bad, they're all, it's a Klan rally. It's KKK, and these are proud boys. They're troublemakers and all this crap. I used to be the same person that if we'd be at a restaurant in Dallas, and if a couple walks in, and she might, the lady might have a Trump hat on, I'm like, really? You're annoyed. Yeah, I'm very annoyed. I'm thinking to myself, out of all the hats, out of all the outfit choices, you had to put on this divisive symbol of this man that's dividing the country, and he's spewing hate and all this stupid stuff that CNN told me, right? An, an opinion that was assigned to me. Um, so I'd just be like, oh, can you believe, man, let's hurry up and eat, man, and get up out of here. What, what the hell? And you just start thinking like, man, well, how do they live? <laughs> just ruin my meal. Yeah, they're anti, y'all anti-immigrant, y'all anti-America. Anyway, that's just for context. So then Trump's intro's playing. It's graphics. And I'm proud to be an American. Shh, ladies and gentlemen, President Donald J. Trump. <sighs> And man, he about to step out. Everybody has their cameras out. Like, man, which curtain he about to pop out of? <laughs> and then, boom, he he just steps out, starts clapping, you know, waves a little bit. And he, he falls from the rafters like on a fucking plane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With his hair and stuff. Um, and he literally had to just, like, just stand there, presidential, boss-like. So that everybody can get their yayas out. Like, he had to literally stand out there for three minutes. For, like, a photo op? While the sun, yeah. Exactly. While the song is playing, his name is on the on the screen right behind him. The podium is there. The um, teleprompters zzz, had already came up, and he's just there clapping. You know, he'll stand there, he'll wave a little bit, and everyone's just ah, taking pictures, filming videos, selfies. And I'm proud to be an American. I almost shed a tear. <laughs> well, at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died and gave that right to me. Dun, 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 stand up next to you. And then he walks up to the podium. Whew, electrifying. 
do you miss me yet? Oh, <laughs> we miss you, Papi Trompas. <laughs> I miss you every time I got to pump gas. I had to pump gas yesterday. It hurt my feelings. I was I literally said, FJB. Why is this little Honda filling, t- filling up with $50? That was the other one. And it was more than 50 And I'm like, I didn't even put premium. I can't put premium. Y'all <laughs> killing me. And he literally hit the greatest hits. You know, basically, I warned you that our border was going to be in shambles. You know, it's a disgrace. It's a mess. It's a disgrace what they're doing to our country. Uh, He says, um, we are past the point of socialism. He said, I'm sorry to say it. We're long past socialism. He's like, we're on our way to communism. Why? He listed some some, uh, reasons and... I'll, I, I might jumble this part up, so sure. this is take it with a big grain of salt. Basically, we have political dissidents locked up right now in a jail in D.C., s- solitary confinement made just for them, for this little f- federal agent honeypot situation where they told everybody to come rally, and then you had provocateurs, etc. So he said, we don't have a real press. We don't have a real media that's going to you can go talk to and they can ask tough questions and do their job. They're just fawning over this man. Uh, He just went on and on just saying, like, the Green New Deal is Green New BS. Yeah. Um, It was so easy to pick apart what what's going on right now. So he's just boom, hitting them with the greatest hits. Uh, Stats. We, We about to have two million new people in our country while we can't even take care of our own citizens. Right. Uh, He's like. He's like, and we have a heart. We're empathetic. He's like, we understand. We don't blame them. It's not their fault for wanting to come here. This is the greatest country. Um, and he just, you know, put on an amazing show. I was so tired from traveling yeah. because I had to get up that morning, like I think like 3.45 a.m., leave my house at 4, get to the airport 4.30, fly out 5.30, land in uh, Phoenix like 6.30 or something. So I was dragging ass. So, um, thankfully, it was a great speech. Otherwise, I'd have been, you know, I'd have been sleepy. How long were you there? How long was the whole thing? It was a damn near all-day event. And before oh, wow. I forget, he said, uh, he was funny, too. He was he was making people laugh. Well, he, yeah, you say that, like, we'd be surprised. I, that's what I don't understand. Like, people that don't at least give him that. Like, he's entertain, He's an entertaining dude. Extremely, yeah. Per- very persuasive. Very good at branding. And he, he did this one bit. <laughs> I call it a bit. Well, he's like... He's like, um, how did he set it up? But he basically said, meanwhile, you know, Sleepy, he didn't have to campaign. He said the media was campaigning for him. Yeah. He says they couldn't even fill a high school gymnasium with eight little painted circles on the ground. He said at some point they even had to get the journalists in. Uh, uh, can you stand here, sir, in this circle right here? Because we got to make it look packed. And he says... Great paint job, by the way, on the circles. I really need to get the contractor's name who painted the circles. I know Hunter didn't paint those circles. He said, <laughs> oh, Hunter, he's never painted before, but now he's selling paintings for half a million dollars to anonymous buyers, a.k.a. bribery. Those are bribes. <sighs> well, it's supposed to be anonymous, and now it comes out that he's going to know who bought it. Oh, he's now gonna, we about he's to know which me- Chinese people bought it? No, no, no. The public's not going to know. He's going to know. He's going to uh, get to meet with these anonymous buyers. Oh, my God, bro. He said, can you imagine if my kids were doing anything like that? He's like, he said, you can go. He says, you want a painting? He says, you can go to Central Park right now. You have these master portrait painters. For 250 bucks, you can negotiate. But for 250 bucks, a beautiful, amazing beautiful painting from like a real painter he's like hunter has never painted before and he wants half a million dollars he's like it's bribery he said I, my family could never get away with that yeah it's a way to clean money <sighs> man it's a way to get that influence for for pop Tem- yeah 10 yeah. percent for corn pop <sighs> well, well and then they came out uh, from his laptop that he was using Smoking another- that crack rock <laughs> that, yes while he was doing that that uh what are we calling this guy raindrop the vp drip drop <laughs> <laughs> drop top okay um was using an alias our, our current sitting, uh-huh. he had a, they, this is from the laptop. Okay. I think the alias that he was using was like Robert something Tell to communicate Hunter? with his son. Wait, oh, wait, J- JB yes. was going by Robert yes. to talk to his son. Yes. Uh, how'd, they, how'd they piece that together? It's, fr- it's in this laptop. So this came out, I believe, yesterday, the day before so yesterday. So he put in the notes, Robert equals dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something to that effect, obviously. I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing here. But yeah, it was something to that effect. Wow, bro. But anyway, let me just uh, wrap it up, summarize my Trump rally experience. I also posted a video, mm-hmm. like, I think it was um, 
I think it was right after, right? Because I wanted to hurry up and upload my vlog. Uh, so you can go to my YouTube or my Facebook and uh, the whole, the whole, it's like 10 minutes in the beginning of me just talking about, so you can piece it together between this and that. Um, but overall, man, people had their families, people had their kids. There was a lot of security. Um, it was all positive. You know, outside, I did see a little group of, of Proud Boys, and I'm like, great, all right, I know the news is going to just focus on them. Yeah. I did see, like, a random Jeep with, like, a big Q on the tire with a bunch of stickers, uh, and I know the news was going to focus on that image and basically say, this is the, we're witnessing the cult of personality, meaning this man is a, a, a snake oil salesman. He's a, uh, what's the word, Sh uh, charlatan? Charlatan, yeah. A charlatan who is charismatic and these people are drinking the Kool-Aid. Because mm -hmm. I, I see the memes, you know, my, my little closed-minded Mexican fans, they like to post things of like Donald Trump holding up Kool-Aid and, and we're all idiots. And it's like, if you just listen to what he's saying, he's saying America first, bring back manufacturing, bring back jobs. We can't crush the U.S. dollar. It still has to be the standard currency of the world. Uh, we can't let these, let these other countries punk us. When it comes to trade, we're under attack. It's an information war. It's a trade war. It's an economic war. Uh, he said, I was the main one telling y'all the bug came out that lab. He said, they're attacking me. You know, y'all are being censored. Y'all not able to talk about it. He says, I just sued big tech. Everyone's just like, ah. you know, for all the Americans that can't no longer have freedom of speech because we gave too much power. He says, uh, Facebook, Google, all of them need to be broken up. You know, these are monopolies and so on. So it was great. I challenge uh, anybody, whether you're a Trump supporter or not, whether you're Republican or not, go see for yourself. I know you might be hesitant, like, man, look, I got a job. I don't want to be labeled. I don't want my to be outed, friends, family, like you're doing something bad. There's nothing wrong with loving your country. There's nothing wrong with caring and wanting to stand up and try to save it because arguably many people feel there were some shenanigans, mm -hmm. you know, on 3 November. Um, <laughs> no time out. <laughs> Y'all feel you, It's a new phrase every you smell, time. You, you smell say. what I underdig. Uh, so, so here's what we're going to do. Next time there's a rally, you know, possibly within driving distance or something, make it more convenient for everyone. Um, Rob, you're invited. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks. You know, because I don't know if you're down like that, Rob. You might be hesitant. Like, look, man, I got a, you know, I got a podcasting career. I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go produce some Lefty Larry's podcast. Shh, no, but uh, so he here's the idea. I want us to take an RPT field trip to a rally. Uh, God willing. Um, because there weren't enough Latinos there. The Latinos that were there. I already knew half of them because yeah. I met them at the last Turning Point event. Right. So it was my boy Edwin. It was my boy Angel. You know, a couple other people and some of the Latinas that work for Turning Point USA. And that's it. Pocos yeah. Pero Locos. It was like, what? Out of those 5,000 people that were in that venue, uh, Fire Marshal said that was it. No mas. It was, I don't know. It maybe was, I don't want to be off because it's 5,000 people, but maybe 300 you know that's that sounds generous maybe it was generous but you'd see like you'd see some cubans you'd see some venezuelans you see like a big group of vietnamese it was mostly white people you see <laughs> a handful you see like some sprinkled black folk here and there like yeah. uh young dudes with like jordans but a maga hat um and they had the great the right spirit because this one little cat the black dude at the end he was going up to white people like hey man i like you racist like, like on purpose, this basically being sarcastic, like, yeah. uh, what's up, racist, you know? And I, and I went up to him and I'm like, hey, man, uh, I said, man, I'm a brown uh, white supremacist. He's like, shit, I'm a black white supremacist <laughs> because we're making fun of how the narrative of the mainstream th way of thinking is that any minority that's there is brainwashed. That's not true. You're so right, man. It's going to lead really well into the first subject here in a second. Let's but do um, it. Well, I wanted to play this because we're talking about the media in this event that you went to. And so you're familiar with uh, the Breaking Points. It's uh, Ka Sager and Crystal yeah, Ball that yes. used to do uh, the Rising on the Hill and recently left. They had this video, and if you guys want to go look it up, it's on Breaking Points YouTube channel. It's from one of the recent podcasts, and it was uh, particularly about the jab. Okay, it was with a reporter. His name's Derek Thompson from the Atlantic. The whole video itself, I really didn't care. For, I watched it. It's, it's fifteen minutes. I didn't. I mean, I watched it all, 
they didn't push back on anything that he said about jab hesitancy, which was pretty annoying. But uh, I was who, talk- who, who'd they have on her? His name is Derek Thompson. He's a reporter for the Atlantic newspaper. Okay, and he was on uh, Breaking Points yes. with, with Crystal and Sager. And the video is titled "How Advertising Ruined the News and How to Get People Vaccinated." Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But here, I just wanted to play the first minute because this is actually a really fun marketing um, story or a little you know tidbit of knowledge that is really interesting when it comes to politics as oh. well. Mm-hmm. I forgot to hardwire this, so, but it should be oh, loaded. Oh, shit. Okay. Sorry. Right. We've got a great guest standing by. It's the Atlantic's Derek Thompson. Hey, Let's Crystal. get to it. <laughs> yeah. Can For I put in a word about the history of advertising as yes, revealed in yeah. Moves Attention Merchants? Go ahead. I love yeah. that book. And my favorite anecdote from that book is that um, the concept of advertising-supported media was invented in the United States by Benjamin Day, who was the founder of the New York Sun. Right. And Benjamin Day is the father of the penny paper, right? So before the penny paper, I guess papers cost like six cents, which was a lot in the 1820s. And he said, no, 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 what I'm going to do is I'm going to price the paper below what it actually costs. I'm going to sell it at a loss, but then I'm going to sell the audience that I captured at a loss as its own product to advertisers. So he creates this sort of dual business model where you get both subscription revenue, the pennies, that you pay for the papers, and the advertisement. Within one year, he was running a nine-part, 16,000-word series on men on the moon. So it took about 300 days between the invention of advertising in American media and the invention of fake news in American media, which goes to show (laughs) that once your job is to essentially just sell audience as a product, you're not beholden to any sort of truth. You're only beholden to the North Star of maximizing audience. And fiction outsells nonfiction everywhere. It outsells nonfiction in cinema. It outsells nonfiction in books. Fiction outsells nonfiction. And so the minute that you introduce this business model, you introduce this tendency, uh, uh, this this tantalizing tendency um, to become uh, a a fake news proprietor. Bro, excellent clip. And we said at the begin at the top of the episode, sometimes we have youngsters listening. So for the youngsters, I mean, or really anybody, this clip is amazing because it really it really shows the landscape and understand the mechanics of how the money flows, how the this business model that big tech also has, because anytime you're on a Twitter or Facebook, you're the product they're yeah. selling you and your eyeballs and your attention yeah the, i think the phrase is like if if the service is free you are the product <sighs> yep yeah there it is so yeah man sometimes people watch the news and they think well it's the news and it's like mm, no it, it's a business <laughs> and there might be a reason why they're not covering the audits and or they're trying to spin things a certain yeah way. i was uh, i mentioned this yesterday to my soul and marissa it when and maybe you have an answer to this or or your own thought on it when did it happen that we all had to agree on everything otherwise you're you're just wrong you know what i mean yeah. the united states is supposed to be a place where the, the whole reason not the whole reason but one of the beauties of it is that we're so multicultural right we're diverse mm-hmm. we have our own thoughts we're independent thinkers we're sovereign nations whatever mm-hmm. now it's like if you don't agree with me you're mm-hmm. basically the devil this is what i think my answer is this <clears throat> the seeds were planted long ago with I don't know if it was maybe Obama or or at what point did it happen, but these Marxists, anti-American Marxists, have been infiltrating a lot of our uh, institutions, right, decades ago. So as of recent, as of late, let's just say arguably you have the CCP has its tentacles Mm -hmm. in our universities. Uh, They've uh, poisoned the waters of our scientific community. Um, Everybody's up for the take. They done bought out politicians. You got Eric Swalwell, Dayton Fang Fang. So you have this agenda of we're going to turn America communist. They're going to be under us. It's almost like they're colonizing us. Um, We're going to change up their whole thing. So it's almost like in order to march us in that direction they needed to paint donald trump and all his followers um evil racist scum of the earth right other the other the unclean Mm -hmm. like the ones you're probably going to want to separate and put them up somewhere in in a big building with no windows uh camps and um (laughs) i used to do i used to thoroughly enjoy having these type of conversations with friends because that i knew disagreed with me right Uh i didn't know to what degree like just political yeah just political or just cultural things you know just think just 
pontificating about what you think is like the right way or the better way. It's not even about right. It's just like, what's the better idea here? If, we, if we're throwing two, th- yeah, two systems, ideas, yeah. yeah, if we're t- throwing two uh, systems into the pool here, uh, which one's going to rise at the top and which one's just obviously not as good and, and therefore going to fail unless people are going to choose to side with. But now it's like, man, you can't get two minutes into a conversation without somebody getting so mad that it's yeah. like, well, we just can't, that we can't work through things that way. Yeah, you're right, man. The division, even my dad, I was talking to my dad yesterday. Um, he said, mijo, el país está muy dividido. I'm like, bitch, you voted for Biden, <laughs> dumbass. Um, <clears throat> este, Where's that Uber at? Mijo, mijo, el país está muy dividido. So the division is at an all-time high. Um, yeah. Obviously, Trump is polarizing because when he came out, out the gate, calling out the fake news, calling out the swamp, and the establishment, even the rhinos, the Liz Cheney's and the McCain's, all these different people, uh, you know, Mitch McConnell's and all these people, they were like, oh, shit, he's disrupting everything. He, people were like, oh, yeah, I'm from Ohio. It's the Rust Belt now. You know, my dad used to work in the steel mills. That shit, now we're getting steel from China. You know what? Who did sell us out? It was both. It was the Republicans and the Democrats. And this new man came in, now I'm politician. So it's almost like the CCP and the elite. Because you have the 1% of China and the 1% of America. They got a little partnership, right? So these people that are selling us out, um, it's like the news media, they had to make it, they had to crank up the heat and make and like speed things up. Like, okay, this guy's talking too much mess. Um, we have to find a way to Just put a wrench in confuse, it. Yeah, put a wrench, confuse people, divide people, uh, fake news, hoaxes, fake stories, take everything out of context and lead us in this direction where they want to start a race war. They're trying to divide us by race. Uh, they're trying to, you know, some people thought the word civil war. Really, the Democrats, they bring up civil war all the time. Every day. Every time. This is the worst. You, what, you, what do you mean you want an ID to vote? This is the worst thing since the civil war. You know, and, and uh, Tim Poole was recently talking about that, that phrase, too, how it gets thrown around so frequently by the left, and especially our current president. He, he said it in a way that was really interesting. He goes, when, you, when Biden gets on camera, you can almost tell at this point that he's not talking to everybody. He's talking to just his side. And he... He genuinely is making it sound like the other side are absolutely the enemies. And it's really, it's, it's weird how polarizing and just blatantly obvious it is. I don't well, know. It's if obvious to us. Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, here's another little quick thought experiment. If, if we just, and this might be the perfect episode, hopefully new listeners, you know, everybody that doesn't subscribe to the Patreon, uh, Red Belt Tamales at patreon.com, mm-hmm. gets... Well, hear this. So let me throw this out there. If we have two ideas, uh, and we're talking about, let's just say, the jab or any kind of cultural issue, CRT, whatever it is, and they're on both, you know, let's just say Fox and CNN, but we took away the lower, thir- the lower thirds and the logo, and you didn't know who the guest was, you didn't know if they're D or R or whatever, and you heard this side or this person talk about XYZ, about CRT, cultural issues, immigration, uh, the jab, and on that side, the same thing. And you put those, just those ideas, and you and I are sitting here, and we're both like, we're, 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 bi- bar, we're, we're bipartisan, we don't know what the fuck's going on, right? And you listen to them, it, would it be that hard to just sit and listen and then discuss, that person said that about the jab, that person said that about immigration, and that about whatever else? And then just, which one sounds better? Which one's more common sense-like? Which one sounds like it attracts more people? Well, first, you'd have to take what they say on each side, and then sift through interpret and start deleting all the really the the trim the fat right because for example um i mean it, it, especially when it comes to the jab it's it's all over the place man like some people it's about freedom it's like look man my body my choice there are side effects and i have some questions and you're not hitting me with data and evidence you're hitting me with this rhetoric of you know it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated you know now it's just them and we don't know because y'all aren't presenting the news. Y'all, not, y'all aren't presenting the information in an honest way. For example, let me go into this mm-hmm. and um, then we can go into this, our, our, this uh, next topic. But did you hear, Rob, that they, it was the uh, Jen Psaki, the White House, this regime, and the new Surgeon General, they basically are doing a campaign with big tech. They came out and said, we working with Facebook and big tech and we letting them know these are the 12 people that are supposedly coming up with like 65% of uh, fake news. Uh, I mean, disinformation. So listen to this, y'all. They said the quiet part out loud, basically. Listen to this, y'all. For one, for one, the government can't 
censor you because that goes against First Amendment. However, the government has admitted that they're colluding with big tech to censor you. Now, the words that they're using are, well, these 12 people are spreading misinformation. Mind you, most of these 12 people are scientists and doctors who, who are just stating legitimate things. Do you guys really think that they're going to stop at those 12? Do you think that they're only going to try to silence those 12? You think they're only going to silence Alex Jones, Donald Trump, and those 12? It's going to be 14 people not allowed to participate in the public forum. No, they're coming for you and your speech. They, basically, the government is saying, well, for the, for the sake of your health, Robert, and for the sake of your health, Pedro, uh, we really need to interfere with what reaches your ears. It's our responsibility to dictate what even gets to you yeah. so that you can make your decisions for your family. Okay, I'm going to play that, and then, we'll, and then I swear we'll get to our topics. Buckle up. This is going to be a longer one than, than usual for the, uh, for the public episode. P- tell me when to stop whenever you've ha- heard enough of this, but this goes exactly to what we're talking about. And I didn't put it on today's subject, but because of what we talked about, it makes a lot of sense. One second. Tell me when to stop. Do you feel responsible? So for a context, it's Chris Cuomo talking to... Um, uh, he's a congressman, I think, out of Florida. I forgot his name. For spreading a message where I'm not going to take it because I don't care what Biden wants. Byron Donald's not going to take it because Byron he Donald. doesn't care what Biden wants. You think that's a good message for people to hear? Well, the first thing is my message was never about Joe Biden. The message is about me and my own personal health. I'm not I'm getting vaccinated old, I because I don't want hold to. On, Chris, hold on, no, no, no. I want to read your words. The, I, I want to read your words. Byron, I, I, I know you don't get to it. cut me off. It's my show. But just listen. It has nothing to do with <laughs> what Joe off, Biden wants. It has nothing to do with what Joe Biden wants. Funny, I never brought him up when I was deciding whether or not to get vaccinated. Why did you? What a fucking. A reporter asked me on a news show and I said it has nothing to do with what he wants. I chose not to get vaccinated because I chose not to get vaccinated. I already had COVID-19 once. I'm 42 years old. I'm in very good health. I actually get checkups regularly and do all those things. That's a personal decision for myself. Members of my family, my wife, my three kids, they've all had COVID. They're not getting vaccinated. They're all healthy. That is a decision they've chosen to make. You ask your doctor. For everybody to understand is this. Hold on. Here's the key thing you need to understand. If people in the United States are concerned about contracting and being hospitalized and dying, of course, from COVID-19, please go get vaccinated. I will never tell you not to get vaccinated. What I'm saying is I made a decision not to get vaccinated. And it doesn't matter if it's you or Joe Biden or anybody else that's going to stress or want me to get it. I'm not doing it because yeah, you, I you're made making that it decision I know, but that's a, just as because a free you, person. Hold on, hold on, Byron. Freedom isn't just defined as the bold and ability to be strong and wrong. It's about doing the right thing, the best thing. You say if Bro, people are worried about wild, getting sick dude. or just dying, then they should closely. get vaccinated. Uh, what about if people are worried about giving COVID-19 or a variant to others, which you very well could do. You could be doing it right now and not know. Doesn't that matter? But you just said that people who have actually gotten vaccinated and may have picked up the variant, that the actual symptoms are very, very uh, mild, if any exist at all. There's a member of Congress just came back. He tested positive and he actually had been vaccinated earlier this year. Yeah, that's why he's back it's and he's not fine. severe. Talk to him earlier today. Because he was vaccinated. Because he was vaccinated. Byron, you but just made me make my, my point. point. But you're making that is the you point. make the wrong point. What is you it? are making the point that everybody has to get vaccinated in order to protect to protect everybody. What I am saying is, is that if Americans want to get vaccinated, if they want to be protected from COVID-19, whether it's the Delta variant or the new Lambda variant that's coming through our southern border <laughs> as we speak, yeah. if you want to get protected from that, go get the vaccine. I fully promote you but doing if that. You don't but at the same get time, it, if there are Americans who are don't want to get it, to they shouldn't be forced to do so. Nobody, but see, that's the thing. It's a false choice. This isn't about you won't force it's me. It's not a false choice. It's, it's, it is. That's actually it is. the accurate choice, Chris. It's, it's not, not an not accurate false. choice. Nobody's forcing enough. anybody. You're trying to push it to where people have to be forced. And you're seeing it as a position of strength oh, no. and advantage. You're the one that's no. pushing it, not me. I'm not trying well, to push no it. There's no question that I you're not pushing push the vaccine. Everybody should know that about you, Byron Donald. You are not telling people to get vaccinated. You are not pushing it. You are not saying it's the right choice. You're saying you're not doing it and your family's not doing it. And you're leaving out of the equation that you can make other people sick as if that doesn't matter. 
Okay? Oh, my God. Chris, did you not just hear my answer 30 seconds ago where I said, if you want to be protected from these variants and the original what about strain, protect please other go people? get vaccinated. I promote you to do that. I just told you live on your own show that if you want to get vaccinated in America, go dude, do it. But dude. if there are Americans like myself who choose not to, please don't berate me for doing that. It is a personal choice I have made it's a, with see, my own health care. No, I am allowed to it, do that. I'm entitled thing. to do Byron, that. You're- All right. It's, it's going to be a lot to uh, unpack right there. Yeah. A lot to unpack right there. Okay. So I think one of the big issues with, with this whole thing is how one side is trying to make it mandatory. Yeah. Right? So the other side feels like, well, hold on now. I have some concerns. I want to process the information. I want to talk to my doctor um, case by case basis. I'm concerned with some of these side effects and things of that nature, especially when it comes to you know, giving it to your kids, your youngsters and all that. So the whole mandatory thing gets tricky. Anytime it may be a slippery slope. Anytime you allow the government to make anything mandatory in the name of your safety, your health, that could get a little tricky. Uh, Some would argue that their main goal is to put everybody on that vaccine passport. That Mm -hmm. way we can control and monitor everything once you have this thing on your phone you got to beep in check in qr code everywhere we've already been primed to because you're doing a qr code for your menu you know what i mean so you about to be the qr code like yeah. you about to come into work beep beep scan in here you going to, into that store beep beep scan it you're you're free to move about freely if you are not you're the unclean you are the other you are the like like the way Cuomo's trying to make it seem like you you're being irresponsible and you're going out there harming people and it's like their messaging with this uh product is so bad it's so bad because Fauci has already lost credibility a lot of people know that he somehow is like one of the most powerful people in America because Millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of taxpayer dollars get funneled and controlled through him. So a lot of these scientists that get invited on MSNBC and CNN, they're all literally basically on his payroll. Like he dictates what gets studied. I mean, this man been around since the AIDS epidemic in the 80s and they were killing more people off of the medicine, the treatment, the AZT that they were giving people. That was what was killing these AIDS patients. Um, they never once came up with a, a vaccine for AIDS. They, they couldn't pull that off. Um, and the way they should probably be presenting this product is it's really not a vaccination because a vaccination is going to keep you from catching it. This is more of like a treatment right. that might make your symptoms not as bad and you may not end up in the hospital and it just gives you a little bit of immunity so that you're, not, you're even less likely to die. Uh, however, there's some side effects, right? Yeah. But the whole thing about mandatory, uh, all these talks about vaccine passports, people really, really need to understand how big of a threat that that could be. Like, if they if they really implement the vaccine passport, that little app, it's gonna be official. We're we're China. We're United States of China, and and we're about to get into that. Um, you know, the vaccine passport. That's very intrusive. So here we have Governor Gavin Newsom from California. California will have the strongest state vaccine verification system in the U.S. and will require state employees and healthcare workers to provide proof of vaccination or they got to get tested regularly. We're experiencing a pandemic of the unvaccinated. That's their new messaging. Yeah. Everyone that can get vaccinated should. So, California, uh, uh, y'all could be the canary in the cage, uh, in the coal mine. Uh, You guys could be the experiment. And a lot of these businesses, like even the NFL, they talking about forcing the players and all this. A lot of these businesses are going to start getting pressured. What what was that ESG score? Right. I mean, think out of that might be unrelated to this, but the fact that they're trying to get these private institutions with their employees like forcing people you know get the get the um that verification system that's really what i'm afraid of yeah um and then this cuomo clip he's talking down he's berating this was a congressman yeah black republican congressman he's talking down to him he's being very confrontational if that was a uh, black democrat 
He probably be like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, my brother? Hey, how you been? Hey, <laughs> hey, Chris Cuomo, man. You know, man, man, you know me, man. Italians, man. We we get down just like y'all, brother. Uh, he'd have been all, what's up, bro? And instead, he's talking down. Oh, you don't think it's irresponsible? No, I'm gonna cut you off. It's my show. And it's like, um, a minute ago, y'all were just saying how black people are, are the biggest victims, and you shouldn't talk down to him. And now, just because he's got an R after his name, you talking to him all stupid. And um. Here's the thing. They try to make it seem like it's mainly Trump supporters and Republicans that are the unvaccinated, which probably that's 80 percent. But then you have maybe some Democrats as well, like let's just say black folk and maybe some Latinos, but especially black folk, you know, because of Tuskegee and everything else. Black folk have a lot in common. You know, black Democrats have a lot in common with run-of-the-mill Republicans. Mm -hmm. They kind of don't trust the government that much, right? So it's just one of those topics where they're trying to make it so clean-cut, like everybody on the right is killing people, and it's a, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And it's like, yeah, but you got some black folk over there, too, that also aren't really Republican, but they don't they don't feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, that Breaking Points clip that I played earlier, if, if people go and watch that whole thing with the Atlantic reporter, he made a really a lot of stupid points in it. it it's in, one of them or two of them were. One was that we need to just go ahead and remove the uh, the EU, the executive authorization, and, make, and let the FDA just approve this thing so that people have less hesitancy and everybody will get it. Two was that if you're on the left, you're in your own vaccinated bubbles and therefore safer than those on the right who are in their unvaccinated bubbles. And when those basically collide is when you have these outbreaks and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's not true at all. Like there's plenty mm. of people on both sides that either do or don't want it. So those stupid blanket statements is what really yeah. makes it harder for people mm -hmm. to at least have the conversation. I mean, this is a very interesting chess game that we're witnessing because the powers that be, they got some smart people working over there. Like, the the persuasion the levels of persuasion um psyops left and right yeah psyops the way they're able to take advantage of situations and it's like okay vaccine how can we turn this into left versus right you know uh vaccine hesitancy uh vaccine passport how do we how do we make it to where the state and the government could get more 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 power basing it off of we're concerned for your health so we're gonna come knock at your door we have a list. We know, we know you're not vaccinated, sir. We know because you're on the list. <laughs> We're able to knock at your door. Yep. We're able to make your employer force you. We're going to make you put an app on your phone if you live in the state of California. We're going to monitor. It's basically social credit score. China, CCP is here. And we've been trying to tell y'all it's already an information war. It's already economic war and everything else. Wars these days don't have to be kinetic. It don't got to be, it don't got to get, not one, what was it? Is it Sun Tzu? Sun Tzu, the art of war, yeah. is defeat your enemy without shooting that one single <clears throat> shot. Man, I got to bring in something else up before we get into a, one of the bullet points, which I don't know how many we'll get to after this, but this was a, a breaking yesterday. And, and one last thing. Cuomo was trying to make it seem like if you're vaccinated, you're not spreading it. It's y'all's unvaccinated people that's spreading it. It's like, no, no, no. If you're vaccinated... And I got to be careful because, you know, the fact checkers is out there. And even though six months later, the shit might be true or whatever. But from what I'm hearing, based on the data, y'all can fact check me. You can be vaccinated and you can still catch it and you can still spread it. It's really just more of a treatment to make it to where you don't get it as bad. Allegedly. Yeah. Am I am I right? You I mean, can still I, catch it. You can still spread it. Just right. like all the people that went to D.C., them politicians. Yes. And what I've also heard is that. I don't know how true this number is. Among those that have uh, died of it, 90% of them were unvaccinated or 95% of them were unvaccinated here in the last, whatever it was, six weeks. So or, basically those that are get, catching it the hardest are unvaccinated. Yeah. Those that are dying apparently are, are the unvaccinated. I, I, when, when, they stat, when they cite that stat, I never hear the underlying conditions. I never hear how long. I didn't hear if it's the first time, second time. I didn't hear a lot of things about it, but that's the number that it's getting thrown around. Yeah. It's just... It's just a lot of propaganda, and I think that only adds to the hesitancy. You know, the fact that we just can't get straight answers. It's very murky waters. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of mudslinging, uh, accusations. But anyway, here we are. PayPal partners with ADL to fight extremism and protect marginalized communities. What the hell does that mean? 
Uh, it's basically putting the kibosh on things like on certain groups, like the Proud Boys, and like people that are, they, they want to kick the, you off of PayPal. They want to stop the pi- the pipelines of cash to these groups that are mm-hmm. pushing these okay. na- these you know narratives and information. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like a good idea. Well, it on, sounds on like the, the surface. It sounds like the CCP social credit scores. Exactly. It sounds, like. it sounds like if you have an opinion that goes against the regime, they can block you from participating in commerce. That's literally. What it sounds like. To fight extremism and protect what marginalized communities. Yeah. Oh, they'll use you as a marginalized community. They'll use you to uh, put in this little fascism. Oh, uh, let me see real quick. It says the initiative with PayPal will be led through ADLs. That's the American Defense League. Yeah. Center on extremism. A leading authority on extremism, terrorism, and hate. PayPal and ADL will focus on further uncovering and disrupting the financial pipelines that support extremist and hate movements. In addition to extremist and anti-government organizations, the initiative will focus on actors and networks spreading and profiting from all forms of hate and bigotry against any community. Well, I asked around a little bit uh, at dinner after the rally. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, man. What are the Proud Boys about? Mm-hmm. And, um, Anti-Defamation defamation League. Anti-Defamation League, okay. And um, just a quick tangent about these Proud Boys. I'm like, what are they about? What do they stand for? What, what? And uh, basically the way one dude broke it down, he's like, man, they just, you know, they're kind of, they're kind of like security, meaning they would enjoy beating up some Antifa. If, if Antifa were to show up and try to start shit, they'd be the ones to buck up to them and slap the shit out of them because a lot of times the cops kind of you know they don't really get involved too much and people want to feel safe and bring their family and their kids to these events um the aclu um, i'm drawing a blank but the aclu it's another little legal uh whatchamacallit one thing that they did is they they're like a group of lawyers and stuff. That's mm. the American Civil Liberties Union. It sounds good. Right. But what one of the things they did is they went and gave the homeless so many rights in California to where it's like a homeless destination. It's like in California, they decriminalize uh, camping out. They can't. They can't move your tent from the sidewalk. You could literally post up on Venice Beach. You could post up downtown. You could just take over and piss and doo-doo and all kind of stuff on the sidewalk in downtown L.A. In ninth days and another way. You could do what you want. All thanks to the ACLU. And it's like, okay, what about the business owners who got a homeless dude out in front of their house? What about communities who paying all this tax money? And they got to have homeless people jumping their fence, going in their pool, yeah. going in their house, killing their pets. Pinche <laughs> desmadre. So yeah, that's very unfortunate, man. That um, that they're gonna start kicking people off. It's tricky. It's tricky because you obviously don't want hateful, bigoted, uh, whoever the KKK or somebody, mm-hmm. which which was started by the Democrats. Um, you don't want any bad group being able to raise money to do bad shit, right? Especially when they use the word terrorism, right? So. But these days, man, they, you know, they'll label you insurrectionist, you know. Racist. Like, I started, I got paranoid. I was like, yo, so because I went to that rally and because that rally was about protecting our elections, are they going to spin it into, oh, we got everyone's uh, phone number and data and location. We're working with AT&T and Verizon. I can already hear Jen Psaki. We're working with uh, Telecom. They said that. Yeah, like basically to suppress text messages. Yeah, we're we're monitoring you because you were at this thing, and we're gonna spin it into hatred, terrorism, insurrection, bigotry. And guess what, Chingo, you're no longer allowed to sell merch using Stripe, PayPal, uh, etc. Bitch, I tell jokes. All right. Uh, did anybody talk about the Freedom Phone while you were out there? No. no? Just no. curious. No, I only heard uh, about it on a podcast or two. Okay. Um, mm. Let's take a let's make a segue here. Same kind of subject, but something that's more in your wheelhouse. Even even I don't say more in your wheelhouse. Just even more in your wheelhouse. Man. Your girl, your girl Robin D'Angelo is back in the news. Let's go ahead and listen to this clip. Oh my god! Laughed at a racist joke. Told a racist joke. Sat in the audience of a, at a comedy club and heard racist jokes. As a as a as a Jew, um, you know, the jokes were fine if they were about mm-hmm. other people. But the minute someone made a joke about a Jew, it was offensive. 
And right. suddenly I was like, I didn't, and, you know, and suddenly that comedian might not have been found funny anymore. How does, how does one cope with that, with that? And that's just one tiny use case. So comedy is, um, it's, I think it's an excuse to get to be racist, right? Like irony. And I think TV shows like Family Guy and um, South Park and maybe a little bit The Simpsons, right, allowed white people to be racist self-consciously, right? Like I know I'm being racist and therefore it doesn't count and it's okay. And it's a lot like what I exposed that couple to at dinner. I'm still reinforcing racist tropes and ideologies and stories. It's still being reinforced in everybody's um, mind who's listening. Um, and so I don't think it's benign to do it in a joking way. Um, and, and there is a concept in comedy called punching up, not down. <laughs> mm. So, you know, you want to punch up, there's very different power dynamics and, and it, it doesn't hurt in the same way. It doesn't invoke a deep, deep centuries long history of oppression when you, when you poke fun at, say, white people. But it's very, very different when you poke fun at, at people of color. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Where do I begin? Okay. This Marxist must have forgot. This is America. We have the freedom of speech. And stand-up comedy is like the last pillar of hope for freedom of speech. So, you know, she could suck it. <laughs> um, and, and let me just tell you this. At my show in Phoenix, I had kind of finished all my material and I, I was just kind of up there like figuring out a way to say thank you, goodbye. And then I was like, I got invited to that Trump rally yesterday. <laughs> that's how you were walking uh, off I went stage. into it. No, 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 no. No, I did a whole extra. No, no, that's what I'm saying. You did your set and then that's, that's what you start before you get off stage? Basically, okay. yeah. I don't think people notice that it's like, oh, he's done. Oh, okay, he's going okay, okay, into okay. this uh, thing he's never said before. I was just like telling my experience like you know being transparent being vulnerable being honest because not everybody there is going to be republican trump supporter of course even though a lot of them were um so anyway i basically told the story and i was trying to make it funny and i was like now any white person i see with any kind of little american flag anywhere i'm like hey man i was at the rally yesterday and they're just like get away from me this is under armor you know like i'm not i'm a democrat uh this is the rocks brand yeah this is yeah this is racist um anyway and I was sitting at breakfast at the bar at, at the hotel, and there was a white dude sitting next to me. And I just tried to chop it up conversation. What's up, man? You from Phoenix? And he's like, oh, no, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I was like, oh, that's what's up. And I'm, we just chit-chatting. I'm like, Cleveland. I was like, hey, man, they just changed y'all's, uh, the Indians mascot is the Guardians. How, how y'all feel about that? He's like, well, it's a white man, right? He's just like, um, many conservatives don't understand how marginalized people of color may feel with such imagery uh, uh, and i'm like well speaking of conservatives i'm like i'm kind of conservative pretty much like i'm new to that side he's like oh man me too dude what's up you know it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like the underground railroad yeah. like it's a dirty freaking <clears throat> word uh but anyway we're chopping it up and i'm thinking to myself i have more freedom of speech than this white man you know what I mean? Everybody wants to talk about racism and marginalized communities. The white man, the straight white male, is the marginalized community mm -hmm. of 2021. They're not allowed to say certain stuff because they're seen as the oppressor. This is what CRT and these Marxists teach. So this woman is up here saying that The Simpsons is not allowed to be funny. Family Guy in South Park. Lady, we are human. Our freedoms are given to us from God Almighty. Right. The Constitution is here to protect those freedoms given to us from God, not the damn state. So these Marxists are ruining everything. Please don't touch comedy. Please don't ruin comedy, because I swear I will go down in history fighting like uh, uh, Lenny Bruce or somebody. <laughs> Real talk. It's like, lady, this is not this is like, please stop. Like, everyone needs to seriously rise up and say, hey, man, we're American. I don't, I don't want my kids growing up in this dystopian society where they have to look back at old images of, um, you know, Americana. Like, here is a, 
here's an image of a father and a son doing a cross-country motorcycle ride and going through Idaho or something. Here's an image of a diner off of Route 69, you know, in Arizona. And here's a picture of... You don't want your kids growing up. They got to check in everywhere with the government. They got to be censored. They can't text certain things. It's like Underground Railroad. You can't say shit. Y'all really want to turn us into China, bro. Like... You Marxists need to stop. Leave America alone. Leave the First Amendment alone. Leave comedy alone. Leave us alone. Keep that little bull crap, them little books and stuff y'all writing, talking about white fragility and everything is racist. And that is the problem. Y'all going around looking for race, 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 race everywhere. Y'all are the racists. Racism is on life support. Y'all are the ones keeping it alive. Don't touch my comedy, lady. Crazy ass woman. <laughs> talking about comedy is an excuse to be racist how are you able to tell me uh, that i'm a person of color and i'm a marginalized community whatever and i'm not allowed to talk shit on stage and tell jokes it's so dumb dude. just for that i'm gonna turn up because <laughs> literally bro it's almost like the stuff they're attacking is the stuff we need to almost like defend right like the, it's almost like the spaces that they're going after now we need to really go hard like i challenge all my stand-up comedians out there whether you're open micer or you dave Chappelle, whether you're doing stadiums and arenas or you're doing a bar and grill y'all need to like your your microphone is your sword and we need to reach people's ears keep inspiring people making people laugh and letting them know that we're all american we're all different but we can all laugh at something we don't all got to be like these stupid marxists yeah, and this account that, that tweeted it out, uh, what is it? What does it say? I can't, from this angle. Man, I need, to, I need to post that, bro. Myth Informed? Myth Informed. Uh, at Myth Informed MKE. They're actually doing an event in Fort Worth in November. So this whole account is about, um, it's like a nonprofit. Dude, send that to me at some point. Like, no, don't, don't close that tab. No, 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 I didn't close it. Um, because they're, so in that tweet, it's to all the entertainers advocating for critical race theory. Here it is. Yeah. Robin DiAngelo explains comedy is an excuse to be racist. <sighs> You know, it's just so... Man, uh, go, what? go ahead. Uh, go ahead, finish your thought. Well, no, it's just, again, it goes into what we've been talking about. Like, that, that's one of those things you could put on the table with somebody that didn't know what side you were on and discuss how dumb of an idea that is. Man, let me just say this, bro. To all the white liberals out there, y'all are really, really getting on my nerves. Y'all are really messing everything up. Who, who gave this woman this amount of clout and power? That's a good question. And then you got these little uh, crash dummies like John Leguizamo following line and, and, and doing a little mockingbird act and echoing, parroting all this divisive crap that everything, America's bad, the Constitution is bad, everything's racist and blah, blah, blah. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. I want y'all to move to Venezuela so bad. Like y'all hate America. Y'all hate the flag. Y'all are anti-American. Y'all are the reason we're so damn divided. Take this woman's power away, bro. So, Myth Informed MKE is a 501c oppose, who opposes authoritarian ideology. Uh, live event, B. Be better, better, yeah, better, better discourse. disclosure, better discourse. Uh, our YouTube channel, and they're having an event in Fort Worth um, on November sixth. Mm. So they just tweeted. Start getting involved, y'all. Start getting involved. Start paying attention. Start going to those school board meetings. Ask your kids: Are you able to express yourself? Ask your kids what the hell they're teaching them in school. You know, listen to RPT. Yeah, man. Robin D'Angelo, you ain't, man, I can't stand you. All right, here we go. A fourth grader told a school board last week her teacher made her take an equity survey she couldn't show her parents. Whew. CCP, Mao, Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao's cultural revolution has made it to our shores in 2021. Let's see this struggle session. My name is Haley Asgard. I was in fourth grade at Riverview Intermediate School last year. During distance learning, I was asked to complete that equity survey. My teacher said that I could not skip any questions, even when I didn't understand. One question asked us what gender file we identified with. I was very confused along with a lot of other classmates. A boy in my class asked my teacher if his mom could explain the question to him because even after the teacher explained it, he still didn't understand. My teacher told him that he was not allowed to ask his mom and that we could not repeat any of the questions to his parents. I want the school board to know how uncomfortable and nervous this made me. My mom always tells me I can tell her anything, but she also tells me I can trust my teachers too. 
Being asked to hide this from my mom made me feel very uncomfortable. I was doing this like I was doing something wrong. Thank you. Bro, send me all this. So look, <sighs> at, at Second Baptist Church, my wife and I, we attended this weekend symposium that talked about a lot of this crap. Um, the way, uh, se llama este? Uh, Pastor Ben Young, son of Ed Young, he did a whole hour-long presentation about critical theory, critical race theory, how it came from the Frankfurt School from Germany, uh, a dude named Herbert Marcuse, how they've been sneaking it in to our uh, institutions, our educational, our colleges for decades, where, you know, these kids are getting brainwashed. Um, the, he titled his speech, A Snake in the House. Mm -hmm. He's basically saying that we've allowed this dangerous ideology into our country, and it's literally a snake living in your house almost like your pet snake escapes and he's just growing somewhere and you don't know if he's if the anaconda is behind this couch or what that's literally what this marxism is in our country i feel so bad for this little girl that they're brainwashing them they're confusing them it's literally chairman mao's cultural revolution during china's great leap forward where the kids bro they were literally some kids that killed their parents they were kids snitching out their parents ratting out their parents yep. um they totally redid all their traditions um, the beautiful people of china have this long long culture a lot of it got erased uh, a lot of their my ethnic minorities people in, like the um the what do they call foul foul dong I forget that one, Faladon, I forget the name of that group, where they're allegedly using them for organs. Mm. They're like political dissidents. They're not what they want uh, to fit the mold. It's just, I mean, I know that's an extreme, like the, uh, the Uyghurs, the uh, forced labor camps, mm. making your iPhones and your sneakers and this and that. Um, but that's the end goal. That's the end goal of all this little stuff of brainwashing the kids I don't think enough people are paying attention to the CRT and, and all this crap. It is harmful. No, no. Um, here, let's wrap up with this one. We all have right. a really short clip here that we can just kind of maybe rant on. Did you see this, by the way? I saw a little bits and pieces. It's super tiny. It's Man, super hey, Tucker Carlson, you lucky I wasn't there with you, bro. <laughs> my, 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 don't my, even get my, 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 my. I don't care, man. Uppercut him, fool. Annoying. I want you to do to this thing. To the United States, to everything else what a fucking world. lame ass weirdo. And I think Tucker was there with his family too. Like yeah, he's there with his daughter. I'm like, what are you doing? What a weirdo. What a weirdo. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what a strange man. Everybody on the left, man. All the normal people on the left. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Tucker. You should have uppercut his ass, bro. Um, to all the normal people on the left, the ones that are just not falling for all this, you know, dudes in women's bathrooms and dudes competing in women's sports and all this extreme crap, this making y'all look bad. <laughs> this little lame ass dude uh, getting in Tucker Carlson's face off for the clout like his world star. Somebody's filming him. He right away went and tagged uh, Rachel Maddow and MSNBC mm. so that everybody can go and see it and they can all uh, spread it around like, oh, he punk Tucker. Well, he look at the account that's really making it go viral. It, it just made, the, to me, it made them look bad. It's divisive. You know what I mean? Like, we support the Occupy movement. We oppose Trump. Shut your monkey ass up. A grassroots political information website dedicated to the goals of progressive Democrats. <clears throat> Weirdos, bro. Yeah, man. I don't know. And some of, some of these tweets, you know, are also just like, they're super in agreement with it. So it's just, I don't know. It, it's indicative of the people that follow this kind of stuff. And brainwash. Think it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's it, dumb. It's very brainwashed. I wouldn't appreciate this from anybody on any side to do to anybody ever, much less with their family so anywhere. Let me ask you this, Rob. You're Tucker Cross mm -hmm. in an alternate reality. Okay. Um, this dude gets in your mug. Yeah. How how you what, what do you do? Uh, do I know the same level of jujitsu that I know now? Or yes, no? yes, <laughs> yes. Everything you know. <laughs> no, nah, man. I I would honestly, if if I was Tucker, but still had the same mentality, it's like it's always. And Marisol always says this. I don't know if it's a Libra thing to try to like balance things out, try to diffuse the situation. Because to me, there's no better activity than a good conversation, right? And if you're coming up to me like that. 
similar to the guy that was on the balcony talking about immigration that I had to say, like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking okay, about, right? in your real life. Yeah, in real life. If this got to that point, if, like, if I tried to walk away as Tucker and the guy's still following me around, then we have a problem because now you're literally in harassing my, in me. My space. Yeah, you're in my space and you're harassing me and you're berating me. And um, from there, man, I don't know how you, how you handle that because you do have your kids there. Well, that's what I'm asking you. Do you, do you like, left hand, grab his collar, right leg, trip sweep okay i like that that's, I'm, a, that's, that's what that's what i'm trying to get to the specific is, act, it, yes. is it an uppercut is it one of these like hey man look here bah knee it's definitely the throw because you want to try to subdue and and back away that's that's the whole idea of all martial arts right event self-defense is is get them down or get them away from you and then you just kind of back up that way it's less of a less of a liability on mm -hmm. you too if you hit the guy mm -hmm. and he falls back and he hey hits man the, but you're tucker cross and you got bread you got lawyer money that's true like he goes out he can goes you night, imagine night. Bro, can you imagine he went viral instead of getting punked? Like, bro, I'm here with my daughter, bro. We're just trying to fish. Instead, it was like, yo, you seen Tucker Carlson? He got the full mount. Yeah. He, he did ground to pound, pop, pop, you know, knee to belly. He got side control real quick. He choked the motherfucker out. That would have made for an amazing clip. I wonder if this uh, Occupy Democrats would have tweeted it if that happened. You're right. That's definitely what he... That, it was almost going to get... I don't know where the rest of the video goes because they stop it after like 30 seconds, but yeah. Well, th that's how I felt because after the rally, I uh, went out to dinner with uh, some friends and uh, so it was like a little... It was four of us. Uh, it was me, two dudes, and a female. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we went out to eat and stuff and and they had on the MAGA MAGA hat. I had on this little white one with the USA. They yeah. had on the red joint with the letters. Yeah. And we walked in. To, first of all, we had to like walk, park one place and then walk for a little bit to get to that other spot. So I'm, you know, I'm like, okay, these my one dude had on a shirt said MAGA forever. <laughs> Another dude had on a shirt that said, uh, "Don't California, my Arizona." And uh, homegirl had, I think, a MAGA hat on too, the red joint. And I'm like, okay, somebody, dude. I'm just like, man, we're like, we got targets on our fucking heads. Right. And then we walk into the restaurant. And sometimes people glance over to see who just walked in. Sometimes the staff is busy and you just, oh, oh, we'll get to you in one minute. You don't know if that's a, we'll get to you in one minute or we're going to get to you in a minute. Yeah. Like you, we're discriminated yeah. now. And again, I used to be that person who, if I was eating and somebody walked in wearing that shit, I'd be like, why does motherfuckers come in here with that divisive, hateful spew? Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, you know, I was I was prepared. Being just I was ready. Alleys. I was ready for a, a little uh, one of them little progressive libs, a little skirmish, get in my face and be like, "And you have a lot of nerve because what happened to you? You were Mister They Can't Deport Us Out, and whatever happened, I thought you were started from the border, and now we're here." And da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I don't know, Tucker. Uh, you need to come on down to H Town. Let Rob train you. Uh, work on them elbows, knee. Tucker, you got to get a little bit better shape so that a uh, homeboy would have thought twice. That's funny. Can you imagine if Tucker Carlson like took off a fat suit and now he's like Tim Kennedy or somebody and he ready to ka -ka 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 pop pop ka -ka -ka pop top. Exactly. What if he looked like the MAGA Hulk? Yeah, that he, he works for Turning Point. Yeah. Oh, does he? Mm -hmm. oh, cool. I met him. So yeah, the, uh, this is that was the show for today. We covered a lot, man. We <laughs> so covered yeah, that was a the lot. show. That was the show. That's it. Yeah, we covered a lot. We covered uh, a lot. Well, it's good to have you back. Obviously, you're out of town. You did a lot over the weekend. Uh, we're gonna do our Patreon, you know, TIA members involved podcast on Thursday. Uh, we'll probably actually save the Chingo chat for after that so we can riff about what happens on the live show. Hopefully mm -hmm. it goes really, really well and a lot of people are able to participate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring some of Stone Cold Steve Austin's IPA beer. Okay. If, if you want to try that. Yeah, I fucks with IPA. Uh, cool. We'll just have a sip or two. You know, nothing too crazy. It'll be a Thursday afternoon. Yeah, because, you know, we still got to be healthy and in shape just in case. That's right. You know what I'm talking about? Yo. So thank you guys so much for listening. This was RPT, season number seven, episode 74, July 28th, year of our Lord, 2021. Uh, if you enjoy what we talk about, if you're curious about politics if this is entertaining whatever if you think there's some value please tell a friend spread the word because i met uh these two uh white women at the grocery store that has a starbucks inside yeah. this is after the rally i was still fired up i'm wanting to talk to people i'm wanting to like you know make some new friends so they're in line in front of me i, I noticed they got some usa shit on and i was like hey um were y'all at the rally yesterday and they're like 
And they're like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, me too. Yeah. It was great. And we're just chit chit chatting. They're like, oh, my God. And then I mentioned like, yeah, I was a lifelong Democrat. I was lefty Larry. Now I'm, you know, over here and I'm seeing things different. They're like, what was your red pill moment? And they asked me, how did you get red pilled? Because the lady said, a lot of my friends, they're very on the left. They're very closed minded. They think all this MAGA stuff is like somehow bad. And she's like. How, could, how do we engage people? How do we get the communication going with our neighbors and our friends and family that it's not all QAnon, Proud Boys, insurrectionists? And I was like, man, that's a really tough one. I was like, I, I don't really know the answer. I think that, that could be an ongoing conversation. Send us a message. Hit us on the Patreon app to see what worked for you. Is it one of those things where like, hey, represent your stuff. Wear your hats. Wear your shirts. Like, make a statement. Express yourself. Or... Is it better to just stay quiet, you know, leave your Facebook how it is, yeah. don't, don't really say nothing at work, like, you know, because you might get labeled and fired and discriminated against. It's true, man. And because the media has so much power, people are more and more afraid to actually speak out on stuff. So uh, the bottom line is wh where it really matters, if you still believe it matters, is at the, at the booth, right? At the voting booth. That's why we need uh, election integrity, so, so that so that it really matters. From the local to the, <laughs> from the local to the top, but honestly, your local matters even more than the top. True that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you. Uh, we have San Jose coming up, Denver coming up, El Paso coming up. Until then, se cuidan, se la lavan y se toman la agua. Sass.